As we explore the respiratory system, we need to look at how the air moves from one place to the next. And so this is what we're going to take a look at, uh, starting from the head because air comes in through the nose. And the first structure that we're going to take a look at are the openings, or as many people know as the nostrils, as you can imagine, this little hole that comes out. We also term those the external nares. So if air comes in through the external nares, through this nose, it will also then go into what we call the vestibule. The vestibule is the place where you can kind of stick your finger in, uh, put your finger, um, pick some boogers out, whatever you need to do. Uh, but beyond that, once you try to push beyond the vestibule, you get into the nasal cavity. What you'll find is the nasal cavity having three major structures coming off of the wall are nasal concha. You'll find the superior nasal concha, the middle nasal concha, and the inferior nasal concha. And underneath them, you, if you were to able to break these off, you'd find a little small hole. Underneath each of them are called the nasal meatuses. They drain the sinuses, and that's where you'll find um, fluid coming in and out if you have like a sinus infection or if you have a lot of drainage. Uh, covering over all this in the nasal cavity, you'll find this nasal mucosa, uh, respiratory mucosa, and olfactory mucosa. You'll find the olfactory mucosa, just this little small one inch square uh, where we can actually smell. And then the rest of it is what we call respiratory mucosa, which will then warm and moisten the air. Uh, and you're wondering, well, what, why do we have all this? Well, the mucosa is to make sure that warm and moist air go to the lungs so we don't spasm, as well as a somewhat kind of pick up debris. But the concha itself helps to kind of turbulent, create turbulence in the air to slow the air down, reduce pressure, and to increase the surface area in which we can moisten and warm it. And so that's what we will find in the nasal, mu nasal cavity. Once we pass the nasal cavity, which is about right after this line, we become into what we call the pharynx. The pharynx is known aptly as the throat, and you'll find that it's divided into three major sections. Uh, the nasal pharynx, which extends from here and then right about here, uh, that's the nasal pharynx, from here to there. Uh, from here, which is like the palate, um, to the hyoid bone, which you can actually see from here, that would be then described as the oral pharynx. So this space is the oral pharynx, and then below the oral pharynx to the bifurcation of the esophagus, this little area would be described as the laryngeal pharynx. And so all three of these are connected, that's why you can stick in a NG or nasal gastric tube as well as an OG, they'll go in the same place as well as if you sneeze or you cough, kind of like laugh with chocolate milk in your mouth, that's why it can come out through your nose. So uh, before we move on from the nasal pharynx, uh, let's point out a couple structures here. The first is this little opening here. This little opening is the opening of the auditory tube, formerly known as the eustachian tube. And you'll find that this goes out to the ear. You can imagine it helps equilibrate the pressure between <clears throat> your middle ear and your nasal cavities or the external environment. And that's why you have the ear popping and such like that. Uh, Behind that is this little kind of tissue-like structure. That is the actual pharyngeal tonsils. This will help defend against any kind of pathogens and such. As we continue to move in the oral cavity, or oral pharynx, what you'll find is two things. Here, right behind the base of the tongue, this is called the lingual tonsils. This is kind of the same kind of texture as the pharyngeal tonsils. And then right back here is the palatine tonsils. You can kind of see these little structures here. So that's the palatine tonsils. After that, we get into the laryngeal pharynx and then you can see the different structures if we go this direction this is the esophagus that we eat uh, but it, or and swallow into our stomach but this way this is our larynx in which we will then go into our lungs what we'll see in this area we'll find um, structures that will help for our voice production as well as uh, you can imagine swallowing and so that's why we see some structures here this is like the epiglottis some structures of the larynx epiglottis the thyroid cartilage, and then here's the cricoid cartilage, and then here's the larynx. You can't really see the artenoid cartilage or the corniculate cartilage, but you can see the little slit here. This is the glottis, and then the two folds, the uh, the false vocal fold or false vocal cords, and the true vocal cords underneath the ventricular fold, and then the true vocal cord fold or the vocal fold. And so that's our structures. Let's kind of walk through all the structures as we go through again. If air were to come into the nose, passes through the external nares, into the vestibule, through the nasal cavity, which has the superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha, underneath which is the meatuses, superior, middle, and inferior nasal meatus, covered over by respiratory mucosa and olfactory mucosa, and then now into the pharynx. The nasal pharynx extends from here to here, 
having the opening of the eustachian tube or the auditory tube and then the uh, pharyngeal tonsils. We get into the oral pharynx, which then has the lingual tonsils and the palatine tonsils. And then we get into the laryngeal pharynx. Sorry, this is the oral pharynx. Uh, then we get into the laryngeal pharynx, which then has the larynx, uh, which has the epiglottis, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, trachea, and then the slits, the glottis itself, and then the ventricular fold, and then the vocal fold, which contain the false vocal cords and the true vocal cords.